Okay, now I'm going to show you how to calibrate the throttle to the speed controller. You want to make sure you have the endpoints set uh, in your fly barless unit correctly so that when you go from 0 to 100, it shows 0 to 100 in the fly barless unit. So that way it knows how much throttle to give the speed controller. So the first couple things we're going to do on the transmitter, obviously, is have it on and on the correct model. We're going to go all the way up to 100 on the throttle stick with throttle hold disengaged. Now we're going to plug in the uh, ESC to the main battery and you're going to listen for the first couple beeps and then you're going to shut it all the way down to zero. So just like that you heard the first two beeps and then when I switched it down to zero you heard the completed tones uh, saying that it is armed and it has recognized 0% throttle. So now we can unplug the ESC. Now we'll set the transmitter aside. I'm gonna leave it on, but I'm going to engage throttle hold just for safety purposes at the moment. So now I'm gonna go back to my program box. I'm gonna take the supply jumper cable that they give you, and I'm going to plug in the jumper cable to the port that says ESC S is going to be the signal wire and obviously negative is the black wire. Now I'm going to take my speed controller. This is a Hobbywing 100 in here, a Platinum Pro 100. Um, and because of the position of this, uh, it's you can't really tell where uh, negative and signal are supposed to be because it's on the underside of where how I have it positioned. So I just remember that the signal wire is on the inner part toward the middle of the plug. So we're going to plug that in. And now you can, this is where you can use the external power source if you have the throttle cable unplugged from the fly barless unit. Uh, because if you don't, it's going to power on the fly barless unit anyways. So then you're going to get some uh, back, back feeding uh, electricity you don't really need. Easiest thing, the way I do it is I just plug it in. Uh, using the main flight pack uh, because I'm going to unplug and plug in a couple of times. So we'll plug it in here. You're going to hit OK and it's going to say connecting. It's going to show you the software version of the ESC and it's going to go through your default settings right here. Uh, I'm going to try and zoom in without screwing anything up too bad. right there. So anything with an asterisk, uh, that means it's a default value. Uh, the value is going to change whether or not uh, it's uh, it's going to change the setting of whatever parameter you're in. Item is going to scroll through the different menu functions and OK is save. So there's going to be first few things you want to leave at default. Now this number five flight mode is going to be defaulted at gov elf and you're going to change that to the next value which is gov store and select OK. So just to show you what that looks like it'll say save data OK. Anything you change on any parameter you want to save it you got to select OK because it's not going to do it without you hitting that first. Go to your next item uh, that's auto bailout basically or auto restart. Uh, so it's, it's pretty self-explanatory. It's going to spool up the, the motor really fast within the first 10 seconds or 30 seconds or whatever you have it set for. Um, or if it's off, then you don't have to worry about it. Um, but since I like to do auto rotations, then um, I have it set for 10 seconds. With a smaller uh, heli, it's, it's fine. Timing and pulse width frequency I have set for per my manufacturer, my motor manufacturer's suggestions, and it runs great that way. Uh, ESC is cool. BEC voltage is uh, based on what your uh, servos can handle, obviously. Auto calculate cells I always leave that uh, just the way it is, and restore default. If you screw anything up, you can always hit this and start over again. Uh, or if you screw up something on the governor store, you can go and switch the value to airplane mode, select OK, unplug the ESC, plug it back in, 
and then go back to governor store and save it again so now from here let's just pretend like we didn't mess anything up and uh, we're going to now do the the what they call flight stabilization RPM stabilization standardization sorry so we're gonna unplug this unplug the uh, ESC from the control box now what we're gonna do is on the transmitter if I can get this angled correctly we're gonna go into our throttle curves setting and normal mode we're going to set how it's from a linear now we're gonna set a flat 50% throttle curve so without me showing you exactly that what it's doing obviously you can just go to number one it's 55 so you will you will set normal at 50% or your flight mode depending on what your radio is calling it set it at a flat 50% engage throttle hold and put your uh, your throttle stick at mid at midpoint and to confirm that you have it at midpoint you can go into your monitor and I use my pitch my pitch is set at zero so that tells me that my pitch on my helicopter will be at zero now if it's a tiny bit windy or if it's actually pretty windy you can go to negative a little bit uh, I'm gonna say probably negative five and that will kind of keep the heli sucked down to the ground so there's no danger of it tipping over or anything like that um, and it will also simulate a slight load as if it's hovering uh, but other than that a flat, threat, a flat pitch would be fine, zero pitch would be fine so you are going to engage uh, the ESC, make sure throttle hold is on P plug the ESC in, walk it out to the flight line now with, the, with everything done that way and still in uh, mid stick you're going to disengage throttle hold let the helicopter spool up uh, after the RPMs stabilize, you're going to count uh, anywhere from 11 seconds to 15 seconds. I normally do 20 just to make sure I'm on the safe side of, of the memorization. Uh, so after, you know, 15, 20 seconds, throttle hold on, heli will spool down, and uh, then you go unplug it. So now we unplug it. Okay, now we can set the throttle curve back to, in my case, was linear. 025 so I'll go back and set it the way I have it and then I'll set my flight mode 1 and 2 just how I want it I have it at 87 uh, it's recommended that there's 15% at least headroom so probably shouldn't go uh, more than 85% on the throttle curve but I haven't had any issues and 87 is right where I like my head speed at is about 3600 rpms <laughs> Um, if you have an optical tack, uh, you can use that to kind of gauge your head speed of, of what exactly you want. And that way you know if you need to go up a pinion or down a pinion or, or anything like that. Mr. Mills' head speed calculator will get you in the ballpark. He doesn't have a setting for Hobby Wing ESCs. So um, I use the YGE Governor Store. Uh, what you also want to make sure that's different from YGE is when you're setting the standardization of the the throttle Kurt or, I'm sorry of the uh, of the governor's store make sure your pack is fully charged uh, I know miss on uh, the YGEs it has you do like a, a, a was it a 4.1 or a 4. Point, or a 4.0 something like that um, charged battery a half charged battery but Hobby Wing uh, we do a fully charged battery um, on governor's store and that for whenever you plug in a battery that's different capacity or has a different starting voltage it's going to know still exactly what rpm percentage you're, you're you have in your transmitter and you shouldn't have any problems if you do have any problems or have any questions you can uh, email support at hobbywing.com or you can uh, private message me on helifreak at darkside 3d that's s y d the letter three and d um, or find me on Facebook under Dave Bartley RC. Uh, other than that, that's it. You can get the Hobbywing program box uh, at hobbywing.com, hobbywingnorthamerica.com, falconsedeco.com, 
um, or typically any place that sells the uh, Hobbywing ESC line itself. So thanks for watching.